Hey there everyone, Spooferjog here again after a massive wait to deliver some more Vatim M video goodness. Did you know that Rockstar Games actually wanted to bring a first person mode to the Grand Theft Auto series 14 years prior to the fifth game's release? Did you also know it was going to be exclusive to the PC port? If not, it is time to dive into the topic of this cut feature. If you open the weapon.dat file, the file responsible for the weapon configuration, then you will definitely spot this interesting note. It has a header that states, not used in this version. In this note, Rockstar game developers stated that the X and Y columns, or flags, are used to link first person animations with a weapon, listing all available animations slightly below. According to the game code, these columns are not used by the game anymore, which the aforementioned header told us before. On the other hand, if we open this file on a PlayStation 2 copy, we won't find this note and the previously mentioned X and Y columns are missing here. During this video, you will see all the first person leftovers that appeared in the files of the PC port. It might explain that Rockstar was planning to implement this feature when porting the game to PC. Not to mention that all lines mentioning first person mode are listed below the PC lines in the leaked text sources. Moreover, you can still find first person weapon animations in the Grand Theft Auto 3 files, and by saying that, I mean every single animation, which was listed in the previously mentioned weapon.dat file. So, let's look at them and try to compare them with the third person animations and see if they are unique. Looks like these animations with the FPS prefix would be used as soon as the player enabled first person mode. As a note in the weapon.dat file said, they were used in the X and Y columns. As you can see, all the action was moved into the sights of Claude's head. The developers really wanted to make this mode special. Before any of you ask, I used the Uzi animation with the pistol because the developers did the same thing in third person mode, where one animation is used by both guns. Fun fact is, the developers said that the third person animations for a handgun and shotgun work better in FPS mode. Sadly, there are no new animations for a grenade, molotov, flamethrower, sniper rifle, or the detonator. I wonder if they were ever made. And yeah, don't panic as I won't show you the FPS rocket animation now. I will show it at the end of the video and you will know why. Here's an interesting fact for ya. In the third person, the AK-47 and M16 use the same animation for both guns, but for this specific mode, the developers decided to make two separate animations, although they don't really differ from one another. While we are finishing watching these animations, I want to repeat myself and say again that these FPS animations are missing on the PlayStation 2 version. Don't forget that the PlayStation 2 version was the first version, which was later ported to the PC. You'll be surprised, but the developers didn't cut the five unfinished FPS cameras from the game code. Let's dig into them using previously shown animations. Here is the 38th camera for the sniper rifle. It has a fully functional dynamic sniper scope. The 39th camera for the rocket launcher. It has the right crosshair for the bazooka, as well as an ability to use the right mouse button to aim the weapon. The 40th camera for the first person view. It does not have a crosshair. Some weapons use a small standard crosshair. The right mouse button does absolutely nothing. The 41st camera for the M16 has the right crosshair for the M16 as well as an ability to use the right mouse button to aim the weapon. And finally, here is the 42nd fight camera. Disables crosshair as well as the ability to use the right mouse button to aim your gun. As you can see, these cameras are located somewhere in the front of Claude's head, and thanks to that, your weapons are rendered outside your view. Fortunately, there is a fix for it. Starting from this moment, I will change the camera offset just a bit and move the camera slightly backwards. As a result, Claude's head will disturb our view. But hey, it's not a problem when I can use magic to make it disappear. Despite being an ugly way to fix that, these cameras start to look much better than before, but trust me, we are not done with their disadvantages. By using any of these FPS cameras, you'll experience broken controls. I mean, if you press left, right, or even back, Claude will only go forward. That's right, you can only change Claude's directions by rotating your mouse, which is very inconvenient. Moreover, you'll notice that the shooting is broken as well. I don't know how to describe it, but you can't change the angle where you are shooting at. Just forget about a Y axis using these cameras. 
On the other hand, you won't experience this problem by using the right mouse button aiming your gun, but not all weapons and cameras are capable of that. Also, every single FPS camera is controlled by a unique process first person ped on PC function. Even the name of this function tries to tell us that it was an exclusive PC feature if it wasn't doomed. The PS2 version has no such cameras as well as no similar function, which would possibly control them. But anyways, what does this function do? First, it places the camera in front of Claude's head. It also calculates the rotation of the camera from mouse movement as well as setting certain values for the angle of view. And what is the most interesting for us, it emulates head bobbing, but this feature is disabled by default. Do you know where you can enable it? In the hidden menu. By using a menu editor, we can bring this cut sub-menu back. It seems that this was a place where the player could tweak some FPS parameters, for instance, controls. Sadly, this menu was never finished until the end and not all functions are listed here. But anyways, we were interested in this show head bob option, so let's enable it. After enabling this option, you'll notice a head bobbing effect. For better understanding, let's look at this comparison, where you can clearly see the difference. Interesting thing is, by enabling this option, these cameras start to work better, because as I understand, this option attaches the camera directly to Claude's head. Yeah, the best way to show you what I mean is to move Claude's head and enable this option. Yes, it looks creepy, but at least you get the idea. But you know what is strange? These cameras for some reason have an auto-aim feature. With this thing, the game will help the player hit whatever is moving in their view, but it is kind of broken. If your crosshair points at a car, the bullets will hit a car with no problems. As I understand, it mainly depends on your angle, because in this case, it works in a very strange way. The same thing happens with PEDs. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. For instance, why didn't it work here? No clue. But anyways, are you wondering why we have an auto-aim in the first person mode? At this point, I have more questions about this than answers. But before we start analyzing this feature more in depth, I want to present to you some short clips of this cut feature. Yes, these cameras look very cool, but honestly, it is so inconvenient to walk in this mode, mainly because I can only walk forward. Maybe someone will notice, but when I changed in-game animations, the whole city starts to use them as well, but there is no easy way to enable them. While we are here, I want to say huge thanks to Firehead, Silent, and AAP, known also as The Hero, on the GTA forums. These magnificent people helped me a lot with this cut mode. This video would not be possible without their support. Also, I want to say thanks to Dimzet and Zanerki for additional help and support. <laughs> Well, let's get back to these cameras. I find it suspicious that all of them have a runabout postfix. I guess only the developers know what it might mean. Judging from their names, they seem to be made of third-person cameras. So let's find out how third-person cameras work in-game. For instance, if you take a sniper rifle, then the game would enable the seventh camera, but as soon as you take an M16, the game will use the 34th camera and so on. I think the first-person cameras work the same. At the right time, the game will use the right camera because all these cameras reuse third-person features as well. For instance, an ability to aim your gun. But honestly, the whole feature looks to be more of a concept rather than a real working thing. Not to mention that these cameras are not suited for vehicles. For instance, by enabling these cameras in the right way, it will freeze them in the air. By changing the right hex value, the car will now steer with the camera and looks awesome. Looks like a soup on ice, fellas. Finally, by enabling the camera with an opcode before entering it, Claude will spin in the saloon during this crazy thing. I guess they didn't make it so far back then. You might ask, but hey, what about this video from E3, where we clearly see a cockpit camera in action? 
Well, that's a good question. I think we all know about a bumper camera. But did you pay attention to one simple thing? If you look left, right, or even back, the camera will still be in the car's saloon. So yeah, during those development days, the developers just moved this camera to a bumper. Easy as that. Perhaps they did it because the cockpit camera was a bit impractical. If we return this camera to a saloon, thanks for this go to silence, then we will experience some issues with it. If you damage your bonnet, then prepare to see nothing in your sight. Oh, did you damage your windshield? Well, try to drive with a huge crack on it. Perhaps the smoke would piss you off as well, because the PS2 version had more smoke than PC. But hey, did you notice when the player flipped his wheels in this video, the camera went to the sky? It seems they wanted to hide this flaw with the camera when it goes through the road and you can see through the map. But hey, in those early days you could still experience it, but briefly. In the final game, when you flip your wheels, the camera goes down and for some reason the screen goes yellow. We assume that the developers wanted to hide the last pesky bug with this camera mode when you see the strange horizontal line in the background. As you can see, they tried their best to fix this messy camera but ended up moving it to the bumper. Smart move, no joke. So yeah, it isn't the real first person mode we are trying to analyze here. Another thing which proves my idea that it was just a concept are the previously shown animations. For some reason, all of them both animations for shooting and for reloading. That is why you see Claude trying to reload his weapon as soon as he shoots his weapon. But anyways, if you want to find out about these animations more in depth, pause the video and check out the details on the screen. Moreover, there is an interesting unused string from the menu which reads as first person weapons. Silent thinks that we could enable or disable weapon rendering in the first person mode or being able to hide the weapon model or display it, but that is just his theory. It would not be a secret if I told you that the Grand Theft Auto 3 PC port was in development around the same time as Grand Theft Auto Vice City. By that time, Rockstar Games wanted to implement this feature in the sequel as well. Sadly, after a short period of time, they changed their plans and decided to cancel it and removed as many leftovers as they could. Things which were forgotten eventually became broken. If we look at the well-known weapon.dat file, there we will find the same notes as in Grand Theft Auto 3, but with some minor differences. Instead of X and Y columns, the game uses A and B flags for this feature. But as you can see, eventually these flags were replaced by other parameters. Interestingly enough, you can still find and enable those 5 FPS cameras in game, but as I said, eventually all these abandoned features became broken in the end. If we enable these cameras, then we will experience another pesky bug with the camera movement. As soon as you start to go forward, the camera will go forward as well, and forget about rotating your camera as it will go through everything. Fortunately, Zanerki found a way to fix that by setting and freezing one specific value in the code. It is more like hacking rather than fixing, but at least it works. Moreover, these cameras have one unique trick to mess around with. If you enable any FPS camera with an op code and then return to your standard camera, then you will see some cool glitches. For instance, instead of aiming your gun, you will be able to rotate the camera around Tommy. Cool, huh? But wait, by using a bike or boat, you will be able to freely rotate the camera around and I must say it works perfectly. I enjoy messing around with this. And now be prepared, when you enter a car or helicopter, you will have a fully working cockpit camera with an ability to move your camera. I must say, a lot of vehicles have a fine looking cockpit camera with it, but there is one flaw with it. If you try to look to the right, the camera will move behind the car. I assume it depends on the car's dimensions and form, because how else should I explain why it doesn't work with bikes and boats? As I understand, it works only with cars because obstacles on foot won't change a thing. It is worth noting that Tommy works very well inside these cars and he doesn't even spin as we have seen with Claude. I assume these FPS cameras have unique bugs because if we switch them through some different camera modes, then this bug won't occur. I noticed that the mission failure screen restores the camera. As Firehead said, it is a bug, but quite a cool one. But yeah, at least it gives us a small clue of how these FPS cameras might look inside the cars. Honestly, it would look magnificent. By the way, you can do this trick in Grand Theft Auto 3 as well, but it handles even worse. The camera can be located outside the car, but in this case, using it makes it very unplayable. 
Moreover, the faster you drive, the more the camera starts to move around. I guess Vice City is a winner here in that regard. Sadly, you won't find FPS animations in the Vice City files, but you can still find Rocket Launcher animations in the GTA 3 PC files. So here is the reason why I didn't show you it. This animation was created for Tommy's bones. Yeah, you heard that right. Files from Vice City are stored in the Grand Theft Auto 3 PC files. Weird, huh? The thing is, this animation is pointless. I mean, if you use your right mouse to aim your gun, Tommy would never display any animation even by using these FPS cameras. Moreover, you can still find the code from the head bob feature in the Vice City executable, but in this case, it doesn't have any text strings left from it. You can enable it by using the menu editor as well. So, as soon as you enable it, the camera will move into the sky. I think this option will still use an old pet bone system from Grand Theft Auto 3, and as a result, it can't find the right dummy and flies in the sky. Why do I think so? Well, if I enable this option in the Grand Theft Auto 3 mobile port, thanks before it goes to Firehead, the camera will fly into the sky as well. Should I mention that this port also has new bone skeletal animations similar to Vice City? And now I want to present to you some short clips of this cut feature in Vice City. Enjoy! All these facts might mean that this mode was dropped very early in development. Perhaps when Vice City was planned as an add-on for Grand Theft Auto 3. You know what, we must be very grateful because we are very lucky to have at least a semi-playable FPS mode in Grand Theft Auto 3 having all those leftovers in our hands despite its faults. That is all for today's video. If you would like to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below. If you would like to do more to support the channel, Vadim is on Patreon, and the link to it is in the description below. You do not have to be a patron to see the videos, but if you can, every little bit helps. Anyways, that is all for today, and thanks for watching.